I have landed in Tari on a grass field cut out from the jungle. Here's the plane I landed on and the surrounding countryside. Okay, here it is morning. It's around 6.30. We're going to go see a tribe of paradise. See the cloud banks on the valley below us, Tari Valley. <laughs> <laughs> the imagination blunders on that one, right? Exactly. I don't know who's which, but... <laughs> Okay, good morning here in Embalage. We're standing out overlooking the Char Valley. You can see the clouds fly back up there. Very beautiful morning this morning. Going, getting ready to go to the Bird of Paradise. The Birds of Paradise are a unique group of an incredibly beautiful species native to Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and Australia. Their feathers are used in the colorful huli wigs. Fortunately, Bird watching tourism has dramatically decreased the hunting of these amazing animals. Bird of paradise. It's a selfish neck. Oh, oh, wow. it is. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Oh, what a shot. Oh, wow. We just look It's the Stephanie's. This Stephanie's. Oh, yeah. Bright blue. Bright blue on the crown. Bird of paradise on tail. Let it go, so don't. Yeah. That's that tough, Tommy. Oh, what is it? oh my god, it's iridescent. Yeah, beautiful, there he doesn't get. Can I have a look at the task? I get a moggy. It's a fairly typical Highland rock house. Land area. It's kind of a store area. These mats are woven and then they're used for the walls of the house. So this is kind of a commercial area. And see the office here is near that. And dressed up in a traditional dress. I mean, this is not. Bad. He's showing him a picture in the digital camera. <laughs> the woven area and the woven mat. The woven mats used to these mats are, are used to build the homes of the people here. Saw this at the lodge. Gentlemen dressed up in native garb. Sure. Right, getting the pictures made. Yeah, see? One, two, three. Looking at the digital picture. One, two, three. Good. Good. Great. Local store. Very good. Okay, this is the traditional Huli gate it's leading to the school. Okay, I'm walking out here through a traditional Huli gate. This is leading into the local school ground. The school is over here. And the athletic field comes over here with basketball, the basketball court. And then this is a local Catholic church right here. 
this is a mud wall which protects against the fighting which goes on between the clans. Uh, only clan members are allowed inside the mud wall. Okay. More so people I'll show you in the uh, traditional dress. Can I take a picture of you? There you go. You want to The headdress is very interesting. I knew that. Mm. Traditional facial tattoo. Mm -hmm. It's gentleman wearing the traditional headdress in this area. Okay. The drivers discussing some of the tribal features in New Guinea, such as there are 800 tribes who speak 800 different languages and they do not understand each other except through the use of Pidgin English. Regarding the Hulis, he means to say they have 200,000 members divided into clans of around 1,500 people each or around 130 clans. The clans routinely battle each other on a lethal basis. The clans are divided into subclans. Disputes in the subclans cannot be settled in a lethal or killing manner. They are resolved by trading pigs. Yes, the, uh, the area we're driving down from the lodge or even where going up to the uh, gap and further down to the bay, the clans called Hale and Hale has nine sub-clans. And uh, looking on to this clan is uh, 1,500 people. While other clans called uh, Baru clan, same number. Okay. Now, do the, do the Hulis fight among themselves? The yes. clans fight? Uh, between the uh, uh, clans. The clans fight? And it then you also have intertribal and clan war? It is a, a trouble between the uh, sub-clans in one clan. Uh, then they have to be uh, straightened out by hearing the word. And then they can pay a compensation payment. No clans war. No war and no. among the sub-clans. That's right. Just between the clans. How many clans are there? Whole oh, area. I do not... I cannot give you the true word in the whole area of Intari. But I would say it's about 200,000 clans. 200,000 clans. 200,000 clans, okay. And the population of our uh, holies, uh, what came on the uh, election back in 97, we had 97,000 people turn up for the election. Mm -hmm. So about uh, 15 did not turn up to vote. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's nearly uh, 150,000. Uh, hoolies. So the hoolies go from the, the top of the mountain. Oh, 200,000 no. pants in the hole. No. Again. Where do the hoolies go? They... Hoolies. Even way up in there behind these big mountains. Okay. All that hoolies. All this is hoolie? All this hoolie. Hey, behind right. the big mountains? In the Tari Basin. In the Tari Basin. Okay. I don't think there's... So the top from the, they go from the tops of these mountains the to the valley, right? To the valley. Okay. And even way up. And we have about a hundred kilometers further to the west. Uh -huh. Then to the south, and we're back behind about 40 kilometers from here. This is all Huli. Okay. They have the same language. Huli is the uh, second largest in Papua New Guinea, uh -huh. and Huli is the largest in our own province in the Southern Highlands. Okay. Wabak is the largest in Papua New Guinea, hmm. and one tribe, the tribe called Obena. Okay. And the Huli is the second. Okay. Uh, largest tribe in the country. There are 800 different spoken languages in the country, tradition and cultures that much different. Mm -hmm. So if you say 800 languages, is that the same as 800? So 800 languages, 800 tribes. Huli is the largest, second largest second tribe. Largest and the tribes pretty much understand one another? No. Uh, in Pidgin. Oh, in other. Pidgin. Oh, Pidgin. Oh, Pidgin. And within the same tribe or within different tribes? Different tribe. Different tribes. Different tribes do not. So if you're adjacent to another tribe, so Huli cannot speak. Say no, no, no. I got my Huli and Obena related way back into the uh, uh, back into the uh, their great great ancestors. Right. And related, and that's the place where they trade. And then to Tuguba. Mm -hmm. Down to the south, uh -huh. right down to Tuna tribe, mm -hmm. and uh, Huli itself, they were four. 
Yeah. And this cup was oh, heavy. How many? How many? I'll get you. This is weird. That's true. Umbrella. And they are very happy to hear that you're the uh, doctor. So they have to hear. How do you have it all now? Thank you. Actually. Her burial grounds. Sunset over the Huli people and the Tari Valley. Today, I have seen a land of great natural beauty populated by an amazing indigenous people who have adapted to their local environment. Tragically, it is also a land of extreme poverty and limited economic, medical, and educational resources which are limited to only those who can pay. It is also racked by pointless and violent clan warfare over land, pigs, and women in that order. The Huli compounds separate the men's house from the house of the women, pigs, and children under the age of eight by a ditch which is maintained by the men. The Hulis believe that men must live together to share their secrets and that women are witches who would suck the life of the men if they cohabited. Sex is usually reserved for procreation and women do not have sex for three years after childbirth while the baby breastfeeds. This is the man's house. Yeah, Here's the garden. The man's house. Good. Very nice. Good. Boundary, which helps the big keep the pigs under control. The woman's garden. And then the woman's house. Traditional truly grave type stuff. Nothing been set up or to on stills. Only the dressing up all these. Yes. And this woman is dressed in a traditional 1940s, uh, widow's like garb, this headdress is especially traditional. And this has been they still continue to wear this, but now they wear t-shirts or, or generally tend to wear black. They have to uh, mourn for about nine months to a year, and they can remarry. Settle down where the airport is. Yes. And this Deal lady has on another traditional uh, headdress. Early in seventies. No more skate. So that's for more. Yes. Okay. So that's the widow because it's longer. Longer, right? Okay. okay. And the uh, dressed up in the tradition. Painting. See, so used to have a um, white clay all over the body. Okay. But Garb, yes, oh, the head, red headdress, black, especially common in this area. It's still yes. worn. So it would be, Western would be you probably see on Wednesday. This woman is displaying how a Huli widow paints her face red, black, and yellow as a sign of mourning. The widows also wear long headdresses with the same colors. The bare feet. The bare feet. Bare feet. Used to, we can't it's do that. Yeah. No, I can't, I can't do it for sure. <laughs> I would look down. <laughs> okay, here we are at a traditional Huli village. Yeah, Over here we have the male quarters provided by this mud wall. This provides protection against intruders. Intruder has to penetrate this, get in and get out. It also keeps the, uh, the pigs um, from crossing and getting injured or getting lost. These kids are showing amazing dexterity walking across this log. We're all amazed. Over here you have the woman's quarters, the woman's garden, another mud wall uh, protecting um, their side of the compound. This, is like the this woman is the only community health care worker in the Tari Valley. In this video, she discusses encouraging the clans to contribute to the construction of a medical building, as well as to follow sanitary measures, such as digging toilets and disposing of rubbish. She also discusses the recent deadly malaria outbreak among the Hulis and the difficulty obtaining medication, in part because they do not have a post office in the valley. We try to teach them to dig toilets, happy shore, where to throw the keys, rubbish. Needs a new program we are teaching them. So since we as a new yeah, I was sorry, ourselves. 
community teaching committee. So are you the only uh, the uh, CHW? Yeah, I'm the only one. Only one here. I went and asked because the number in here is too much. Yeah. So I went and talked with the boss to give me another stuff and yeah. said, go back and put a building up that, you know, needs yeah. money. Oh. Uh-huh. So the people don't won't get together and build a building. You're getting yeah. a new building now, right? We at the war that thing here. Tomorrow when you come, we'll, I'll show you. Okay. It's uh, put up by the community. Okay, great. And we contribute some contributing cash. Yeah. Whatever they can contribute, they contribute. Jennifer, what's your last name? I I P. A I. Yeah. So you're saying malaria up here too? Malaria is outbreak in here. Really? See, I really think there are mosquitoes here. So, uh, and many are resistant to chloroquine and quinine. Yeah. So that's why the, uh, we talked to Stephen. Uh-huh. And then he sent us that medicine. And, <laughs> and then it's hardly for us to get medicine. Do you know what he sent? Uh, malaria? Uh, Mephiquin? Mephiquin? Yeah. That one he was Mal- trying to send, but it's... Malibra? We have no post office in it. I'll show you the little box. These are some examples of the weapons that the Hulu warriors carry into clan warfare. This is a bone dagger created from the long bone of the cassowary bird. No, no, I'm the holy man. <laughs> Every day we call. Every day we yes. This is ceremonial week. This warrior discusses how his spear is constructed by showing initially how the tip of his spear is made from the sharp claws of the cassowary bird, as illustrated here. The claws are also used to make the tips of arrows, and the long bones of the cassowary are used to make the bone daggers, traditionally used to kill clan enemies by stabbing them in the neck. The cassowary is an ostrich-like bird, which can reach a height of six feet. It is by nature aggressive, but imprints on the first thing that it sees at birth, which is a huli warrior. In addition to being used to create the weapons of war, the cassowary is grown for food, while its feathers are used to adorn the colorful wigs of the Huli warriors. The quill of the cassowary is used as a nose piercing. As will be seen in later clips, the hide of the cassowary can be used for clothing, religious ceremonies, or to create a detachable spear shaft, which a warrior will carry into battle. The warrior finishes the description of the spear by stating that the shaft is made from a locally grown reed. Uh, now, this is made out of the... Uh, bamboo? This cassowary is, cloth. This is bamboo string. Bamboo string. Cassowary. Cassowary cloth. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This wood, a bit, bit. Here. Is that bamboo? Yes. Yeah. No bamboo. Bit, bit here. Bit, bit. Yeah. Some yeah. reeds. Some, some reeds, some type of wood. Yeah. Tomorrow, if you... Me... Big. Yes. Dress up. So tomorrow you're going to dress up as a Huli warrior? Yeah. You can fix yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will come in you. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. Somebody come in today. He ain't going to come down now. He break it. You oh. look him too. Not on the right. He is not on the bus. He not just, no, look him. No, look him. No, no, no. Uh, Smoking through the uh, yeah. traditional pipe. Oh. He's uh, filled these leaves up with water and he's going uh, to, I guess, use that to uh, mix the paint. Obviously, dressed up in full warrior outfit. This warrior is wearing his social wig, which he grew with his own hair. The nose piercing comes from the quill of a cassowary. Okay, you take it out. Ooh, put it back in. <laughs> nice trick. It's good. Oh, yes. I'm going to go. Now, the, the headdress is made out of, uh, is that the bird of paradise, oh. or what is that? Yeah, cassowary. Casu- oh, it's cassowary. Cassowary? Okay. Thank goodness. This is a bone dagger, traditionally used to kill clan enemies 
by stabbing them in the neck. Putting on the headdress, which is made of human hair. His hair, I believe. Okay, this is the, the more public one. If you go out, uh, you would wear that. Um, and then this is the ceremonial one, which if you're going to some kind of religious ceremony, or I guess war ceremony, um, you would uh, wear this one. He's mixing up the paint and the leaves. Tarot leaves. Tarot leaves. Thank you. Um, so Edabe is the headman painted who his has beard white, mm -hmm. and he will do a paint on his legs. He will do a spotted paste you know, painting. Oh, really? And Mr. Gigubwa, who has a smoking children. <laughs> Men, woman, is this, are they, are they, what are they smoking? Tobacco? Tobacco. Oh. They did, well, they, before they didn't smoke tobacco. Yes. Okay, the paste planning is now completed. Again, the one on the left is the social headdress, the one on the right is the ceremonial headdress. This is a more appropriate social wig, much nicer. Very beautiful, actually. A lot of colors. Yeah. Oh. Now, the sun. Yeah, oh, it, looks, it looks good. Okay, so we're standing here. This gentleman is wearing his social wig. Hair that he's grown on his own and cut over a seven year period. Okay, we're inside a compound here. Again, this is the women's house. The women care for the pigs, the kids, and they grow the plants. They learned how to tie the pig, how to look after the pig. Okay, the, these are the women working in the fields. They're planting sweet potatoes. And then, uh, as we've noted before, the men in the women's houses are separated. And then they have the mud, uh, mud wall, safety, control the pigs. And then, uh, it's a burial site here. And then here's the women's house. Pigs are about 70 well, you got kino. Oh, you're so in there. Oh. <laughs> this is the, the garden here. They divide this in half in the in between the men and the women. And the men take theirs and cook it themselves. So they're in home. Grass skirts they're wearing. We are entering into the other inner portion of the compound. Okay, we're in the women's. And two brothers are digging. This is the kitchen, their house. You can the uh, brothers uh, digging the yams here, the sweet potatoes, pigs. Okay, here these gentlemen are digging yams in the uh, traditional uh, New Guinean uh, dress. Their uh, social head uh, head uh, dresses on. Right there. Example of a mud trench between the men and women's compounds, and the men maintain these. Just looking around the compound here. This is the pig house here. Pigs. Um, this uh, is the kitchen area. Look at this tree here. And uh, this is the women's house. You can see this. Uh, okay. This is the women's house? Yeah. This is the women's house. Approaching the women's house.
Uh, they get their heat right here. They have an open pit fire. Beds here. Adam 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 Okay, we're standing here in front of the women's house. We were just taking a look inside. Uh, basically, they get heat from an open pit fire, which is burning right now. So I guess burns most of the time. Uh, can't be good for their health to be breathing. That kind of stuff. Behind us here is the um, kitchen for the women. And this is all the women's compound that we're looking at. Look over here. We have the pig house. And then the field of uh, sweet potatoes that the women have planted. And the men were out there harvesting a little bit ago. Um, to take home and prepare for themselves in their own homes. There she's teaching grandchild how to make a rope and the rope will be uh, used to tie a pig. Here you see the smoke from the campfires and also the cloud banks are beginning to roll in as the temperature cools. Last night the temperature in my room dropped to a chilly 54 degrees in this mountain climate over 7,000 feet elevation. Fortunately I had an electric blanket in my room which kept me warm as I slept through the night. Today, we visited Huli Compound, where the heat was provided by a continually burning open pit charcoal fire located in the center of the Huli homes. The people live and sleep in this smoke-filled, choking environment. There was no chimney or any other form of ventilation. The smoke simply seeped through the cracks in the wall of the hut. Here, I just want to demonstrate making a fire. Dry grass. That's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. You know, you know, if Tom Hanks could have seen this, he would have saved them a whole heck of a lot. Oh. 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 I can just kind of see the ember in there. Oh, that is cool. That was very cool. It's your turn. Oh my god. See one, do one, teach one. That's definitely a Boy Scout thing. Oh, oh yeah. And especially when you hold in the fire in your hand. I think that's a ward is ready for that one. Climb this down away here. Yeah, no, no. 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 Various possessions on her. Oh, bread. Good. A My friend, the Huli Award. Were you on the video? Recording? Yeah. I'm with my friend the Huli Warrior here. This Huli Warrior. This is Jokjish. See? This is Jokjish. A shooting man of big Kaswari. This is Jokjish. He go in. Bori. Guy. This is because he get hooked. He's shooting man of big. He go in. Full heart. Okay. Two types of memo. This is Kaswari cloth. This is Kaswari cloth. Come apart. Charlie. 
Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we're walking on the trail to the village of the Wigman. Make sure the young men come to grow their hair so they can get their their wigs. Crossing the mud wall. The traditional holy top gate. Good morning. Yes, morning. The wig is a critical element of the Huli culture. Virgin Huli warriors come to the village around 14 years of age. They grow a wig every 18 months. At no point are women allowed in the village. <laughs> This warrior is wearing his social wig, which he grew with his own hair. The top of the wig is adorned by the cassowary. All the feathers on the front come from the cassowary, parrots, and birds of paradise. The nose piercing is from the quill of the cassowary. So now, the everyday bird of paradise, bird of paradise feathers. He can take it out and put it in. Yeah. But those boys, that's his own hair. He cut it. Make it teaches the boys how to grow their hair. That's a daily wig. I mean, daily dress. the wigs. Mm -hmm. And that's a habit, so they can pull the fresh part out. And uh, secondly, they are going to use those uh, leaves to <coughs> pass the water, and uh, then they are going to sprinkle on to their hairs. And uh, the teacher will use his powerful magic words, and uh, then they're going to pass it on the water and uh, sprinkle on to their hands. Okay. And uh, you can see the, this man here with a big wig. These two men, you can see their many leaves into their wig. Mm -hmm. That it makes uh, hair grow faster. And we will see closer when we go out there. So if you didn't get that, they're putting leaves in the hair because they feel that makes the uh, mm -hmm. the hair grow faster. And uh, we will see whether through his own hair or false hair, we will see when we go out there. He's going to lift it up and we can take pictures. We can put it when we go there. Now he's giving a full of water give to Tisha and Tisha will make his use his powerful magic words. Now he's share, giving to them and uh, sharing between them. Then they're going to drink it. <laughs> then they're going to pour the pot out. After spitting out the water, which symbolically represents the blood of their mother and their transition to manhood, the Huli warriors will pray over and then sprinkle the magical water on their hair to make it grow faster. <laughs> and wet them on the water. Because the teacher teach him how to say the magic words and they are using the magic words together. The teacher teach him how to say the magic words. 
Because when they go out somewhere, they, when they want to pour the water into their plate, they have to set the metric weight. Mm -hmm. That's why they be selfish here. <laughs> Now, they're growing their just wigs. Just giving us the action board. This is how they sleep because they don't want to disrupt the, the uh, form they're trying to give to the wig. This is uncomfortable. Oh, so These are the sticks that the warrior sleeps on over the 18 month period that he grows the hair for his wig. Multiple wigs may be grown during his stay in the village. I'm on our one. The guide will discuss how the wigs are colored and that two social wigs are used to make one ceremonial wig. You can see here two red and the one black. That black we use it here because there's one of our brother living in Enga. It's called Enga, Engan people living in there. This, they look like black skin and uh, they normally use their uh, wig. Ceremonial what? The red or the black, the clay or charcoal. They take <laughs> two years by doing this because they can split this uh, not ke it's a Kelly, see? They split it like this, like that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's yeah. like that with the yeah. 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 Stick it inside oh, there, oh, 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 then oh, oh, it won't oh, oh, go oh, inside, then oh, stuck it together oh, there. But it's going to oh, come out and go. So oh, they have to split it, oh, and oh, poke oh, it inside there oh, with oh, this oh, little oh, here. Oh, this thing you can split it out like this and put it inside. Oh, 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 only this one. Oh, this one. Oh, this one. This is a special key, and uh, this one. We have it in ambulots, which is uh, the leaf, out of that leaf. It's not enough for them. Six hundred enough for ceremony one, and uh, three hundred enough for everyday week. What's a guinea? So, a guinea or kina? It's six hundred kina. Six hundred kina, yeah. Six hundred enough okay. for everyday. I mean ceremony. Okay. Because. Yeah. Because they just so 600 enough for that. Because yeah. see this, two every day week, two of these ones can make one ceremonial one. Mm. Uh. They put it on top like this and patch it together with this one, like that. So patch it here and stack it together. Then it can become one ceremonial. Oh, so that's from two that. people. Two two people can make one ceremony one ceremonial. Hmm. Two every day week mm -hmm. can make one ceremony. So six hundred kinos and two hundred bucks for one of the every day week. Oh, hang on a while. Little and little and two and he's every day. And we have one other than a boy. Oh, you don't tell me. You're not a wall. Oh, had I? Don't get more with it. Oh, who would be over without any money? About a tanga no water mirror. How about that? Mirror, are you? But the wig man, you won't touch it. No. Yeah. This one is everyday week, so mm -hmm. they can. Yeah. Yeah. Tied it together at the back and you will get pain. Mm. Pain? Pain, yeah. yeah. 
then you stay there yeah. like that uh -huh. until you finish with the singeing and <laughs> then they're going to remove it. Mm. <laughs> okay. Charlie, I'm always getting the picture done. <laughs> dressed up, I believe, in the morning. A morning ceremony. Hell, I should have taken that picture. Yeah, this is for a spirit. Yeah, I should have. I really should have. No. I, I, I. Hey, move it down. Oh, I didn't know I wanted to do that. Is done to because the, people. Done by older men. The doctor come and <laughs> um, everybody's here. So, but we are usually are still using uh, some sort of a the night. Magic witch or some other, just like a slides when. Kind of cuss word because there's. there's all this one is a Stephanie, a strawberry the Stephanie. And Stephanie, of course, is a bird of paradise. This is my final sunset in the Tari Valley. In the distance, as the evening chills, the Huli clans light their campfires, and the smoke rises as the clouds bank roll in, and the people prepare for what the night will bring them. <laughs>